Hi, welcome to my sixth tutorial on WPF and Model View View Model and VVM. This is Mark. Um, if you remember the last time, we set up our properties and we bound them to our text boxes and our text block. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create a relay command where we can bind a command to our button. So let's, let's go over to our project, right click on it, and we'll add a new class. We're going to call this class Relay. command. Let's go ahead and add that. Now we're going to make the class public. Now it's going to be a lot covered here so we'll probably set up our re relay command class and the next video we'll go ahead and we'll implement that relay command. Um, but let me just try to cover it. I'm going to give you the basics of what I know and if you need deeper explanations please Google it. Um, I'm just trying to get your foot in the door here. So let's go ahead and we're going to inherit from I command, which is an interface. Interface is just create a contract between the class and the interface, and we'll implement the I command members in the class. So basically, what we want to do is we're going to have two fields. Let's create a region where we'll have two fields in this class. So let's go ahead and our first one's going to be an action so it's going to be read only action and then it's going to be object and then we're going to have execute now what this action actually does is basically we're saying we're creating a pointer basically to a method that can execute and what the object is is basically um, we're trying to have a generic so we can execute anything with this method so object is the highest level basically so if we want to do pass in a string as our action um, object will execute it if we have a class called you know my furry cat well, object will cover that, so we can basically set up the action on anything that is an object or less derived of object. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, so now what we're going to do is create our predicate, which is a delegate also. So it's going to be a read-only predicate object, and then this is going to be the can execute. Now what this will do, this will this will return either true or false. So if it can execute, it's true. If it can't, false. I mean, it's not any simpler than that, you know. So this says, you know, if our action can or cannot execute. So let's go ahead and collapse that region now, and let's go ahead and create another region. And our next region is going to be our constructor. So now let's go ahead and we're going to have our constructor. Now by building our constructor, um, it's going to create a new command that can always execute. So that's what we want to do. And then the parameter we're passing in is the execution logic, which is our action. So we want to do public relay command. And then basically we're going to pass in our action. We know it's an object, of course, and then we're just going to pass in execute, not to be confused with our local field execute. And then what we want to do is this. I'm going to say execute, and then don't forget our comma, and then null. So that's our relay command in a nutshell. So let's go ahead and don't forget our curly braces, which we can just do that with them. Let's see, it takes two. Now 
Now you'll see that right here, it's giving us an error. Well, it's not really an error. We just haven't built our other constructor. So now we're going to do public relay command. And now this is where we're going to create a new command with, we're going to pass in the action and the predicate. So here's the action. Of course, object. Everything's going to be object here. And then we're going to pass in execute. And then let's pass in our predicate. And you can see it already fixes our other constructor. So object. And then we're going to go ahead and say can execute. Alright, so now underneath this constructor, we're going to go ahead and say if. We're going to check for null and execute. Null. And we want to throw an exception, so we're going to throw new. It's going to be argument null exception. And then we're just going to throw execute in here. Then we're going to say that we're going to use our local fields. So we're going to have our execute. That's going to equal execute. Then we're going to have our can execute local field. And that's going to be our can execute parameter. So basically, we have our two parameters we have the action and the predicate, which we're passing in from the first constructor because this can always execute and so what we're doing is we're passing in execute and null so here's execute where we're going to pass null to the can execute object and we're going to check to make sure that execute is not equal to null so if it's equal to null we're going to throw an exception otherwise we're going to say that execute equals the can execute and can execute equals can execute so I know it Sounds confusing, but it's not really. You know, we're just basically setting everything up. So now, what we need to do is we need to go ahead and create our I command members. So what we'll do here is this is going to be, we're going to have a bool, and we're going to have a public event, and then we're going to have a method. Now the bool is going to be our can execute. The event is going to be can execute change. So did it change or not? And then we're going to have execute, which is going to go ahead and fire our relay command. So let's go ahead and we're going to collapse the constructor. And now our last region is going to be I command members. Just copy and paste that and save on time and typing. Alright, so we're going to have this is going to be a public bool. And this is going to be can execute. Basically, what we want to pass in here is our object parameter. So, our object, it should be a parameter. And then we're going to return can execute, which is our local field, or our field, excuse me. So we're going to return can execute, and this wants to be equals, not the assignment operator, null. So if can execute equal null, we're either going to return true. Or we're going to return can execute parameter. So what we're saying is if our local field can execute is equal to null, let's go ahead and return true so we can execute. Otherwise, whatever the parameter that we're passing in, um, we'll go ahead and pass that instead of true. So 
that's basically that. You know, there's not a whole lot to that. So true or whatever the parameter is. So now what we want to do is go ahead and create our event handler. Now, what our event handler will do, well, before I go into the event handler, this can't execute. This is our predicate. So when we go ahead and create a new relay command, you know, that can't execute. This is what we have. So it's either true or if we pass something from the I command, it'll pass that in instead into our predicate. So now let's go into our event. So public. There's a lot of advanced topics in here. You know, and like I said, there's just not enough time to go ahead and cover everything under the sun. So like I said, if you have more questions, please Google it. I'm just kind of giving you your foot in the door. So here's our public event. Event handler can execute. Changed. And so now we're going to, because it's an event handler, you know, it has no parameters. But what we're going to do here is with the command manager, we're going to register and unregister the can execute changed. So anytime it changes, we'll go ahead and we're going to add it. So add. And we want to say command. Command manager. Duh. Requery suggested. Say then I have value. And then we'll go ahead and remove it. Now what this does is it's actually going to execute this on the thread. You know, so you know, and it's always going to execute on the thread. So that way we know what's going on. And you know, basically we're just requerying it, making sure that, you know, did something change. Now let's go to value. So that that's both of them. So that adds it to the command manager, and this removes it from the command manager for our can execute change. So you know, so we have an event, something happened. You know, we fired the i command, so we're gonna go. Oh, can execute change? Can it change? Add it or remove it? We're good to go. So and what it'll do is, no matter how many events you have, it'll add and remove it for you. So if you have, you know. 30 commands, you know, all the commands are going to be added or removed. Alright, so let's go ahead and our last one is going to be our public void execute. Now what this will do, it will call the action specified during the instantiation, you know, of our parameter. So we pass the parameter and instantiates it and then we go from there. So it automatically creates it for us. Now I'm probably saying that I'm probably saying it wrong, which you know I do sometimes, but as long as you get what I'm saying, pronunciation I guess is alright. So let's go ahead and create our public void execute. We're gonna have one parameter, so it's gonna be an object. Parameter. And now the only thing we're going to have in here is execute perimeter. So that's it. So there is our relay command interface. Um, or our relay command that inherits from the I command interface. So basically we're all set now to where we can go ahead and we can fire I commands and we can make our button do something and create an action. And like I said, we can use this for all of our commands. Um, I don't normally rewrite this. Um, I use it, and I copy and paste it into all my projects. You know, I'll create the new relay command, and I'll just copy, you know, basically this right out of here and paste it in a new file. There's no sense remaking the wheel every time you want to use something. Um, so we're getting a little long with this tutorial, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop it here. In the next tutorial, we'll go ahead and we'll create our I command members in here um, and we'll create a method that fires. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next tutorial.